Welcome back to another episode of the I Am Changing podcast. This is episode 41 and it's a summary of one of my latest blogs entitled How to Change Your Misperception from the Outside World. This is a really common thing that I'm seeing in clinic is how people misperceive their reality. Ask yourself to transform your daily life. And so when clients first walk through my door, one of my first questions other than hi is always something along the lines of, so what brings you here today? And the answer lately in 2024 has been very consistent. And it goes like this. I'm feeling overwhelmed, anxious, stuck, heavy. It's big stuff people are feeling. So during a therapeutic session, we unpack the root cause of those big feelings. And we wrap up a session with, it's nearly always that sigh of big relief. When people sit up off the table or hop, hop out of the chair, you can see their face just drop everything that they walked in with. And, ah. Thank God I've let that go. And clients frequently are prescribed homework interventions with the view of creating positive infused habits to perpetuate the work that we've done in session to let go of stuff. So once you get home, rather than deep diving down a rabbit hole when we're potentially triggered and we're reactivating that trauma experiences reaction, we can utilize what I call a circuit breaker to simply interrupt that old uncomfortable program called survival. And you know what I'm talking about? Those I'm talking about those behaviors of negative based thoughts, negative based feelings, those self-sabotaging actions that leave you feeling like crap. So sometimes the best way to create the change habits in your life to head towards the dream life that you want is to pause, take a breath. And my clients often report back to me that this is the moment they, they take that breath and then they feel a little lost as to what to do next. And so this is where the circuit bracket questions come into play. And I always suggest, ask yourself, is there a circuit breaker question to interrupt that neurological negative pattern of survival? And in my own personal experience, it's actually so useful to ask yourself a simple question because it forces that brain, your beautiful brain, to switch off the survival program. You're running that reptilian brain and turn everything back on, return back to solution oriented thinking, turn on that neocortex, the frontal dorsal lateral cortex, the frontal lobes where all of that solution oriented thinking happens. And so here's some questions for you to self-explore today when you've hit that moment of, oh, now what do I do? And you can ask a singular question or use these questions as a combination. Question number one, does this align with the life I want to create? And so this question is designed to reconnect and focus on the goals associated with your dream life. What is it you want? What is it you want to be doing, thinking, feeling, experience instead of this negative survival reaction? When we ask our question, does this align with the life I want, we're questioning the current status quo, and this enables us to turn on those frontal lobes of solution-orientated thinking and discern, decide, to decipher whether we're still aligned with our true north or whether this negative thought, feeling, behaviour is simply just garbage and it's the old survival program. And that's the point where you create a choice point in your life to decide, you know what, that's that's the old way of doing things. I need to get back on track and automatically your motivation and creativity kick in. So that's question number one. Does this align with the life I want to create? Question number two, what would the best version of me do? This question enables you to step out of the drama dance, whether it be yours or that of someone else. When we ask ourselves this question, we're quite simply turning off the tantrum and getting on with having a life experience, learning the lesson, frankly, getting on with it. Is this what the best version of me would do? Is this a garbage thought? Does this thought, feeling, experience, behavior serve me to get where I want to be or is it weighing me down? Question number three, does this compromise the energy I want to operate at? This is really powerful because it gets you thinking how invested you are in drama. Because let's face it, so often we get caught up in the humanness of our experience. We get caught up in that survival program. We get caught up in that old reactive story in our life. And when we're reactive or defensive, all of our energy, all of that physical, 
mental, emotional, energetic energies are directed towards keeping you primed to remain in flight, fight, freeze or form. When you're in that mindset, there's no capacity for solution-orientated thinking or proactive action. And so asking this question enables you to recognise exactly how much energy you're investing to maintain that survival status quo. And then you give yourself the choice, do I remain in that or do I switch gears, switch direction, change it up and move forward in a different direction? Question number four, am I chasing this for myself or others? Don't get me wrong, you're allowed to be of service to others. To pour from an empty cup, in my mind, always rings true. If you use all of your energy for your service, how do you continue saving, helping, servicing yourself without burning out? Are you chasing or continuing to invest in the drama dance of someone else or the drama dance of your old reactive story? And you get to ask yourself, why am I continuing this? What's this serving me? What do I get out of? What's the secondary gain for maintaining all of this hate fire, all of this drama, all of this negative excitement? And what does it do to me? Oh, it creates survival. And so I react. And then you get to ask yourself again, so what does reacting serve me? And it goes on and on. This question, when we ask ourselves, you know, are we chasing this for myself or others, is actually a beautiful, gentle method to become curious as to why you're invested in that negative survival action. It gives you the opportunity to step back and ask yourself and enable you to identify whether support, especially if you're investing in someone else over time, is actually still appropriate for you or safe for you to continue. Because often we start out with all of the right intentions and then when we get overwhelmed with overcommitment, we're allowed to step back and reassess this actually isn't serving me anymore and it's not serving the other person. Question number five, will my future self thank me for this? This question is used to reinforce the desire and the need to step back and simply observe what's happening outside of you. It's only then that you can fully recognise consciously that what's happening in the outside world may in fact actually not be your drama dance. It may not be your stuff. And this is incredibly powerful when you realise your reaction has simply been invested in someone else's stuff, their negativity, their pattern. And so I wonder not only what you gift yourself when you step back and realise and return to just observing, what does that also invite someone else to do? Especially if you live with them or they're a, fa- a close fr- friend or family, what are you gifting the other person When you decide, you know what, that investment's no longer for me. It's not serving my best or highest good. It's not serving the other person for me to remain in the dance that only serves up a shit sandwich. And so it's a beautiful gift to decide, to discern from the heart, not from the head. You know, what am I getting out of this? Is this still for me? So wrap up to today's Episode 41, if you're ready to tackle that sense of foreboding, overwhelm, anxiety, or that sensation of feeling stuck when you're investing, supporting someone else, try those coaching questions today and, you know, look forward to changing the way you perceive your external reality. Hope you enjoyed.